Okay. Well, Democrat calls for impeachments continue to grow. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says if the House moves forward on the issue, it's going to be because members are ready to vote to impeach the president. But while speaking to reporters yesterday at a Christian Science Monitor breakfast, she downplayed the likelihood of that ever happening and dismissed the suggestion that the House could vote to censure Trump. Where exactly is the line for you? I mean, you've sort of spoken about threats to the Constitution from mm -hmm. this White House. So, so when does it rise above all the other stuff for you? What does that Well, trigger? we stop finding even more information. This is, as I say, with me, this runs deep. And uh, ev every day uh, we see more. So why would we stop with our less strong case? If you're going to go down this path, you got to go down this path. You have to make it so clear. I think censor is just a, a way out. If you're going to go, you got to go. In other words, if the, if the goods are there, you must impeach. And censor is nice, but it is not commensurate with the uh, violations of the Constitution should we decide that's the way to go. Still, there are at least 69 House lawmakers, including one Republican, who have so far come out in support of an impeachment inquiry against President Trump. The list contains 12 fresh Democrats, including the latest call on Monday from California Congresswoman Katie Porter. She joins New Jersey Congressman Tom Malinowski as the only freshman lawmakers on the list who represent Republican-leaning districts. With us now is freshman Congressman Sean Kasten. He became the first Democrat to represent Illinois' sixth district since 1972 after defeating Republican incumbent Peter Roskam in the 2018 midterms. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. Should there be an impeachment inquiry against Donald Trump? So with great regret, the answer is yes. I, you know, I'm... I came here as a businessman and a scientist and I wanted to work on climate change and this wasn't why I came. But the daily assaults on the Constitution, what we know Russia did, and the failure of, of, of the president to allow us to do our job has, I think, made this a necessity. Corrine. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, um, Congressman. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I, I have a question about what we've been seeing um, with uh, Congress, um, uh, and particularly with yesterday with Hope Hicks, and having these behind the doors type of hearings where, you know, she doesn't answer questions and the American public is not seeing what's going on. Why do this? Why have these hearings behind closed door and not tell the story, not show um, the public? And have her uh, deny answering questions just in public so that we can all see it. Well, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to second guess the, you know, the leadership on the various committees, but I think it's pretty clear that the Trump administration is playing a game of let's run out the clock and hope we can hide things. And look, I hope the president is not guilty. I would vastly prefer to live in a country that that's true, but the only way we're going to find that is through an insistence on transparency. And if the president shared that commitment, he would be telling his staff to be more open with us. The New York Times' Peter Baker is with us and has a question. Peter. Oh, Congressman, thank you for coming on. You just said that the president was trying to run out the clock. I wonder whether you think the speaker is trying to do the same thing. In other words, if we put off a, a point of decision on whether to move forward with an inquiry so long that we get to the point where we say, well, we're in the middle of an election, why should we, uh, let's, let's let the voters take care of it. Is, is there a point of which you think uh, impeachment becomes sort of less tenable because we are in the, in, in, in the you know, throes of an election to decide whether President Trump should be reelected or not? Well, look, I'm not, I'm not going to try to get into mind reading what other people think. I think she has a lot of responsibility and a lot of information that I don't have. For me personally, I think, the, I think it is important that my voters understand what my thought process is, and I think that's true of a lot of members. Um, and, I think we, and I think until we can actually have the conversation with the public about why we are so concerned, it's hard to get the public to understand the stakes of what's going on. So, um, so that's where I am, and I can, I can speak candidly with what's in my own head. I don't want to speculate on what's in other people's heads. Jonathan Lemire. Congressman, uh, two questions for you. First, what's the tipping point? Why today do you decide to come out in, in favor of impeachment? But more than that, as just noted, you're the first Democrat to hold this seat in, in quite some time. Uh, what are the voters in your district saying to you? Is, is impeachment something that's even a topic, or are there other matters more on their mind? 
Um, I don't think this is the top issue for the voters, frankly. Um, and you know, I think the you know there's a part of the job of being a representative that says you've got to represent your district, which is a pretty important piece. But I think no less important, the voters need to know where where their representative is and how they think, because I don't think morals are negotiable. You know, with respect to your question of why today, I came to this decision some time ago, but it's not lost on me that as someone who. You know, as someone who flipped a seat that had been Republican since 1972, um, there's a certain story that's there, right? And I don't want to put pressure on other folks. I don't want people to feel like I'm calling them to act in other ways. But I think it is very important for my constituents to know what I think, to understand the constitutional threat we're under, and and to understand that we're at a moment where what's going on should not be partisan. What the voters think, what the Republicans think, should not matter. We all took an oath to the Constitution. We should all care that Russia interfered in our election. And if if I can't tell people honestly where my how I came to those views, then I can't expect to explain to them why they should understand the stakes of, that are at play here. All right, Congressman Sean Kasten, thank you so much for being with us. We greatly appreciate it, and uh, that's that's pretty significant that you have a, a guy who's the first Democrat in the seat since 1972 coming out, talking about the need to start the impeachment inquiry. Look, it is significant, but I think what the last thing he said was also significant, which is that it shouldn't be a partisan event. And I don't need to remind anybody about what happened with the Clinton impeachment. Impeachment and what it did for Clinton, first president in a long time to pick up seats in the midterm, left office with an approval rating in the mid 60s because it was viewed as a partisan impeachment. I personally think it's a mistake. I agree with Speaker Pelosi, but also remember one other thing the math isn't there yet for impeachment right. because you have to get 218 votes for impeachment. You're not going to get uh, Republican votes except for Julian Amash. She's got 63 now who say they want it. There, I'm sure some others who would vote for it if it came to a vote. But a majority of the caucus is still opposed to doing it. And I think personally, for the right reasons, I'd like to see Donald Trump drawn and quartered. But I just don't think a partisan impeachment politically is, drawn and quartered. That's going to be the headline. Well, we could debate which way. <laughs> no, um, no, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, politically, of course. Politically, of course. And quartered, yes, but, exactly. but, but what we don't want to do is go through a partisan impeachment that is simply going to be something he can. Run on. I mean, yeah. there is a lot to be said, though, for the moral imperative there. Uh, if that is what he believes as a lawmaker, he owes it to his constituents to pursue that moral imperative. The worst lesson that we've drawn from the 1990s is that it was politically disastrous for Republicans to impeach Bill Clinton. Not that Bill Clinton violated the law and lied under oath and deserved some some sort of a, you know a, 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 a rebuke by at least the the House, if not uh, conviction by the Senate. Um, so I, you know, I feel like if that's the lesson that we're taking from the 90s. We're, we're missing the forest for the trees here. They do have an obligation to the Constitution as well as their constituents. I must say also uh, that with Bill Clinton, Ken Starr did most of the work and found out that Bill Clinton had committed perjury uh, in front of a grand jury and committed perjury uh, in a deposition. And those charges were so serious that he was disbarred by the Supreme Court of the United States and also in Arkansas. In this case, Corrine, look what we have hanging out there. Yeah. We have Robert Mueller saying, here are 10 examples of how the President of the United sure. States mm -hmm. quite possibly obstructed justice. But I can't come to a conclusion whether he did obstruct justice in these 10 cases because the Justice Department won't We're, let me. He was limited. Mm -hmm. And then you had the Attorney General after that going ahead and saying, oh, well, he should have come to a conclusion, which, again, so there's a back and forth there. And if you read the part that Donald Trump's the proudest of, which he obviously hasn't read or else he wouldn't bring it up, the part about the collusion, the cooperation, yeah. the improper contacts with the Russians, that is equally damning. That section is equally damning, and it is all just hanging out there because you have an attorney general who is trying to cover this up and move people along and uh, put, or, or if not cover up, put, uh, put the best possible light on it. He's acting like a defense attorney, criminal defense attorney. And then you have Robert Mueller who's not speaking. There needs to be a resolution to all these questions 
to, to quote Richard Nixon, the American people have a right to know whether their president is a crook. I, I totally agree with you. Look, um, that the report is 448 pages, and it's very damning. And it lays out, uh, volume two, as you were mentioning, uh, obstruction. And I think Robert Mueller wrote this report, as many others have said, so that the Congress can act. I actually believe in having an impeachment inquiry. I actually wrote about it uh, this week in Newsweek and lay out the reasoning for it. Mm -hmm. Look, we have to we have to really answer the question: Is 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 that um, is this country? Are we? Uh, do we believe that no one is above the law or not? Right. And the president is not above the law. That is the question that Congress needs to answer. And also, the second part of this too is we cannot set this precedent. Right. We cannot set the precedent that this president currently. Is could potentially get away with it and not be held accountable. He needs to be held accountable. And it is, to your point, Noah, their constitutional duty. Congress needs to act. This is the step that they need to take. We can't let this play out continuously until August comes around and they right. go, all go on recess. We need to talk about this now and hold those hearings and tell the story and show the American people what's in this report so that they understand and we'll get those underlying uh, documents will learn more they'll have more power to do a lot more and um, it is very disappointing and I respect Nancy Pelosi but I think we need Congress needs to act and they're just not well and we, we need to do something that hasn't been done yet we need to get all the facts yep. and uh, Robert Mueller began the process Congress needs to end the process they have a constitutional constitutional duty for oversight and then let the facts lead where the facts lead Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.